The debt service is about $500 billion, the deficit is right about $1 trillion. The US government is borrowing money to pay the interest on the debt. A standard definition of bankruptcy. And it's during what is called an economic recovery. The only source of funds that could pay off part of the debt, maybe a one-third of the $28 trillion, is to tell the truth about the mortgage-backed security mess. Cleaning up that mess may have cost a few trillions, but many more trillions were made on the way up, via fraud. The US government has a legit reason to claw back some of those credit derivative profits, but it would involve seizing the wealth of a demographic that is obviously given preference in US society, the bankers. And since the US government doesn't have the stomach for that, they have no options but to print digitally. So I guess now thanks to the Fed making debt meaningless, we can all update our retirement spreadsheets to reflect at least a 35% return on stocks per year every year. What could go wrong? After every boom, there is a bust. It has always happened in the past and always will in the future. When times are good to make plans for the bad days, when things are bad, hunker down and enjoy finding deals on things that were out of your price range a couple of years ago. Get ready while you still can. Only greedy idiots and unaccountable fund managers are buying the markets now. They will all get crushed when the epic collapse happens. It's different this time. There was never QE and not QE QE repo before. It's also based on cheap and fake money and debt. I really believe that banks are front-running corporate buybacks. Corporate buybacks will be less effective, the higher the market goes. Eventually, like every other bubble, it will pop. Who knows when, but it will. I can't wait to see what fraud they come up with to start it all over again after the next bust. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. The crash of 2008 was the direct result of Barney Frank's Community Reinvestment Act, which forced banks and brokers to make home loans to people unlikely to be able to pay them back, in the name of racial equality. Period. And since that law is still in place, it's going to happen again. The Austrians have been right all along. And they will continue to be right as well. And there's plenty of people with a bearish mindset that has done extremely well in this market on the way up. It is possible to stack silver and own Google. What is right is right. If a person knows Austrian economics, you would agree and realize that no one can predict the when. These folks are correct, but the problem is that they didn't strike the fear in the general public, dumb as usual, but the Fed. This is why they are doing repo operations, cutting interest, and now QE4. They are so scared of the inevitable because they know there's no cure. And that's a historic effort that no one in human history has ever done before. You can laugh at the folks sounding the alarm one after another, but you can't deny the fact that the end is near. The Fed minutes reveal the fear of the bubble that they have created, but what did they expect after manipulating so much of the rise in the indices? It is illogical that they now show fear for the ailing market that they have created themselves, the Fed cannot escape and must continue to print money and manipulate the indexes in perpetuity. Long live the Fed. There is a surplus of stupid and too many gamblers at the tables. The dealers can pump and manipulate the markets and the debt to infinity really. Like modern day gold miners on worthless land. They'll still dig, and dig, and dig. Feeding the markets, hoping and praying they'll strike gold. They are handing out counterfeit money, handing it out to their billionaire mates who are buying real assets with free money printed from nothing, but we the people will pay the tab. Money printed out of nothing is counterfeit. But the dumbed down people are going look at the stock market, not realizing that they are paying for the rich to get richer. Then when the dollar crashes, the rich will have assets, and the people will have debt. The people don't realize that this is the grand finale where they get buried once and for all. No more middle class, just the rich and the poor. Total power. The reckless behavior of the central banks means that there are going to be massive defaults and probably the destruction of the dollar and unprecedented geopolitical instability. We all assumed they would back off before it got to this, but sadly, we were wrong. We are now well past the event horizon, and all eventualities from here on are bad. Everything from a dollar crisis to World War III is now on the cards as well as a likely global depression. It's going to be ugly, and I hope it ends soon before it gets any worse. 
This is the result of a 40-year bull bond and the stock market as interest rates have fallen from 18% to near zero, wild printing, and over the past decade, QE. Since 1982, stocks are up 3,500% while real GDP is up 150%. Buffer index, which is the total stock market value to GDP, was 0.28 in 1982. Today it is 1.6. The historical average market to GDP is 0.6. If we were at a historical average market to GDP, GDP would have to be 60 trillion. This market is not the result of production. It's the result of 40 years of easy money. It's no longer just me using terms like Armageddon, crisis, devastating, chaos, Great Depression. It's leaders of the world's most noble and conservative central banks. The big banking squeeze that began in September never went away. In fact, repo auctions last week looked worse than ever, in spite of the Fed's launching of QE4 ever. With a new $60 billion a month in permanent reinflation of money supply pouring back into the economy now, the Fed still has found itself back to where it began in September with its repo operations becoming hugely oversubscribed, meaning it has more takers than what it is offering to give. Dealers submitted $52 billion in securities for two-week loans of new temporary money this past week against the Fed's offer to do $35 billion worth. The question here is who has access to repo, and where does the money go? The repeating issue of a dollar shortage in overseas demand comes to the front. And it may be nothing more than dollar debt. On a larger scale it goes to China. The Fed is not simply liquefying US markets, it is pumping global markets. Why? The usual signs of credit tightness are not there, Libra has been steady lower. So no cracks in the system they are frantically patching? It may just be the dollar markets reacting. It's a one-day creation of new money in the system until they roll it over and over again, as they are doing. So, the one day, added only $75 billion ever since that repo began. Only. Sheesh. That was not enough however, so they upped it to $120 billion that they now keep rolling over indefinitely. Because those one-day repos do not aggregate, the Fed added a repo operation with a 14-day term, and they have up to three of those running at the same time because they do one or two of those operations a week. They set that at $30 billion per operation, so, at any given time, the term repos were adding another $90 billion in aggregate into the monetary system. That was not enough, so they upped it to $60 billion per term repo, which means at any given time, the term repos are adding $180 billion into the monetary system in addition to the $120 billion added by the constantly rolling over overnight repos for a total of $300 billion in new money in the system at any given time since all these operations began. That was not enough, so they started $60 billion per month in permanent QE which they claim is not QE simply because they are doing it at the short end of the interest curve to uninvert the curve, which, of course, is utter nonsense because it is still new money created out of nothing that goes into the monetary system. Since this would be QE4, if they were calling it QE, I'm going with the term QE4 ever because we have already seen they have no capacity ever to remove this from their balance sheet. Therefore, it does monetize the US debt as permanent new money created out of nothing to buy government bonds. It is technically QE since it expands the Fed's balance sheet. Would it unwind the repos then it would be QT since it decreases the balance sheet? In the end, it is just a twist by the Fed, because they have two. Bernanke lied under oath that it was not monetizing the debt since they would unwind it once the economy was stable again. Well, they proved that to be impossible. Returning to QE would instantly prove to the market that it would be QE forever and send the long end rates spiking and the dollar crashing. So they come up with this, but of course, it is just repo in perpetuity. In the meantime, the 3 month 10 year yield spread up from 15 BP this morning to 20 BP now. So it looks like markets already start to move, specifically the long end. The Fed can't undo the tightening by starting QE again. The Fed was able to pull off the increase of its balance sheet because it promised it was only a temporary fix, which would be unwound when the economy was stable again. Investors believed that, and therefore the dollar didn't crash. Now they are beginning to understand that the Fed can never go back without deflating the financial markets and the economy. This, by definition, means that inflation expectations will be revised, and the long end of the bond market will shoot up. This will blow off the junk part of the bond market, 
and very likely the triple B part, and it is game over. Also the increase in the 30 years will blow up the housing market. The Fed is stuck. They can try to prevent the wheels from falling off. But they have no idea how long they will succeed in that. That is why it is now an unrecoverable disaster. We have to keep compounding the debt by half a trillion each year just to maintain interest's payments, and that half a trillion in interest has to increase each year by the interest on the additional debt we take out each year to make the interest payments. And that is where we are with nearly record low rates. So, the whole government would blow up if rates rise, which is why the Fed is forced to keep them low and to go back and stay with QE in order to keep monetizing the government debt while claiming, of course, that it is not doing that, as monetizing the debt is illegal in the US. What a charade. And nearly everyone goes along with it and doesn't even question it, because they don't want to deal with the question. This was the Atlantis report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.